Today I want to show you how to make cauliflower rice and you can make it with a hand grater or you can make it in the food processor and if you do make it in the food processor I want to show you the right way to do it and then I want to give you a few tips and tricks on how to prepare the cauliflower rice to eat. Hi sweet friends I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Cauliflower rice has become very popular and it's wonderful for those of you who are on low-carb diets or paleo or keto and so on and so forth. Anything where you have to watch your carbs and, uh, and limit the, or limit them. And cauliflower rice makes a great substitution in place of white rice. The first thing that we're going to do is just remove all of these green leaves and we'll just work our way all around getting everything off. Once you get all the leaves off, all you want to do is cut this in half because we're going to cut out the core. And we'll just go in like this, nothing fancy, and we'll just pull that core right out. And then the next thing we want to do is just cut this in pieces that are easy to manage either for your food processor or your hand grater. So just like this, nothing fancy. Now if you want to use a hand grater to rice this, what you'll want to do is use one that has a large grate. You see some of them will have the real small grate on one side and the larger grate on the other side. You want to go with the larger grate. And then all you do, it's very simple, just take your cauliflower, be careful with your hand, and just grate it down like this, just as, like if you were grating some cheese. That's it. And with that large grater, you get a real nice, fine texture, very similar to rice. And I'll take a close-up picture and overlay it so that you can see exactly what this looks like very up close, but very similar to rice. It's, it's quite terrific how this works out. Now, if you're making a small amount of cauliflower rice, like I am today, just enough for myself and my husband, the hand grater works great. But if you're making more, say you want to make a big batch and you want to put it in a couple of cup measures and put it away into your freezer so that you always have a constant supply of cauliflower rice if you eat this frequently, then the food processor can really make this job go very quickly. However, if you decide to use the food processor, I don't recommend using this blade, the main blade that sits at the bottom of your food processor. And the reason is this can create very uneven pieces of the cauliflower rice. It can even leave some pieces fairly large and then make mush of the others. So what I recommend instead is when you purchased your food processor, chances are it came with a few more blades, maybe this and maybe one more, as well as the main one. This is the grater, and the grate on this, on the main, on the blade that you probably got with your food processor, is about the same size as the grate on a hand grater. So this works perfectly. And then all you do is just go ahead and fit this down into your food processor. It'll just sit on top of the little Prob chances are your food processor came with this little tool that allows you to use these blades on top and you'll just go ahead and put this on and we'll grate a little and I'll show you the con how the consistency will look very s similar to the hand grated one. So we'll just go ahead and put a couple of pieces down into the little shaft here and then we'll get ready to grate it. Makes very quick work of it. And as you can see, the consistency is very similar to what we got with the hand grater that's in the bowl here. And oops, I'm spilling some. And I'll take a picture and I'll overlay the one from the food processor so that you can see that it's very similar. And I just want to take some more out again and I'm going to take another out of the bowl here. I'm going to take another picture and I'll take a picture of my hands together. So this was what we did in the food processor with the grating blade. And this is what we did on the hand grater with the large size grating blade. So you see they're very, very similar. Very similar in texture and, and consistency and size. 
Alrighty, well let me finish grating up all of this and then I want to show you a couple of different ways to prepare this cauliflower rice for maximum nutrition. Okay, I've got this all grated and ready to prepare, but before we move on to that, I just want to mention a few tips for uh, diagnosing any problems that you might have uh, when you make cauliflower rice. Uh, hand grating it usually goes very smoothly and there's no problems. If you use the grating blade, as I mentioned in the food processor, for the most part, as I showed you, it will come very similar. Uh, if you have a lot of stalk on your floret, that may grate out a little longer. So when you put all of the pieces into the tube, make sure that you have relatively, you know, small sized, bite-sized florets, and that will grate up beautifully. Now, what if you don't have this type of grater with your food processor, and all you have is this blade? You can make the cauliflower rice, but as I said, you have to be careful because you can get something that is a mush and then with large chunks throughout. So what I recommend is if this is the only option you have and you want to make a lot of cauliflower rice as opposed to having to hand grate it, then what you'll want to do is you'll have your blade down in the bottom like that and you'd put your cauliflower in. Just start by pulsing it and then checking it. Pulse a little more, check it. Once the majority of the cauliflower has that rice consistency that I showed you, then take everything out. And if there are a few large chunks of cauliflower that have not turned into rice, just redo those separately or hand grate them, whatever the case may be, depending on how much you have to do. You can, if you're doing a large amount, you can go through and do each batch, get that which is riced, put or turned into rice, the mock rice, so to speak, and put the large uh, pieces aside and then do those all in one batch, you know, at the end, something like that. But don't try if as you're checking it, the majority of your cauliflower rice looks good, don't try to continue pulverizing it until all of the chunks of, of all of the florets are turned into rice because what will happen is that which already is looking nice will become mushy and very small, almost it can turn into a paste. So you want to avoid that. So that's diagnosing some problems. And one more thing I want to share is those of you who know me well know that I don't like to waste anything. So you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with this. I've got some ideas for you. Number one, these green leaves, you can pull all of these off, rub them with a little olive oil and roast them in the oven. The same way that the popular kale chips are made, you can do the same thing with these cauliflower leaves. With the stalks, you can chop them up, saute them in a little olive oil and butter, salt and pepper, maybe a little Parmesan cheese grated on top. It's a wonderful side dish. And the same thing with these cores, you can puree them, you know, cook them uh, to where they're soft and then drain off the water and then puree them and you can use them in a cauliflower soup or add to any other soup that you want to give a creamy texture. But the cores, I definitely recommend cooking these so that they're nice and soft and then pureeing them and adding them uh, to, you know, a soup, as I said, or whatever the case you may be. You could even make, a, depending on how many you have, depending on how many heads of cauliflower you're turning into cauliflower rice, uh, you could even make them into sort of a mock mashed potato. The reason that I recommend that you boil these first and then uh, and drain the water and turn them into some sort of mash is as I've shared with you uh, as I've shared with you in other videos where we've talked about cruciferous vegetables is they contain goitrogens and goitrogens can affect your thyroid. So if this is something that you would be eating on a regular basis, and we're gonna talk about how this applies to the cauliflower rice, but just in terms of the scraps here, if you were eating a lot of cauliflower on a regular basis, uh, you would want to reduce the goitrogens as much as possible. And the way to reduce goitrogens is by boiling it. And there are other ways too, but uh, if for the home cook, uh, chances are you're gonna be boiling this and then turning it into some sort of mash or some sort of puree. Uh, so go ahead and boil these till they're soft, drain the water, and then go ahead and cook them in any fashion that you want. 
So those are some tips and tricks as to what to do with the scraps. Now, speaking of goitrogens, I want to talk about this cauliflower rice. If this is something that you're going to eat on a regular basis, for example, you know, two to three times a week, maybe more, because you're following some sort of low carb or paleo or keto type diet and you need to limit your carbs, so you're using this on a regular basis in place of white rice or other grains, then you're going to want to take a different step in terms of its preparation. I don't recommend just going right to sauteing it every day if you're eating it that regularly. What I recommend is that you take a little pot, bring it up to a boil, and then add your cauliflower rice to that. And I'm gonna, I'll overlay a picture so you can see what I'm doing. Then you're gonna wanna cook this for a few minutes and then drain the water. And then once you've got that all uh, cooked for a few minutes, and it's only, it's not like you're cooking big florets since you're just cooking these tiny little, uh, basically rice pieces, uh, it'll just take a few minutes to help lessen uh, the goitrogens. And then once you've just boiled those up for a few minutes, you can just take a uh, little wire whisk like that, not whisk, <laughs> a wire scoop like this, I call it a spider, uh, like a spider web, or a slotted spoon will work well too, whatever you may have. And then you'll wanna take that out and just let it drain a little. You can drain it on a paper towel, uh, and uh, you know, really that's it, or uh, a tea towel, you know, a dish towel, something like that, that's clean, whatever the case may be. And we'll just take a few more minutes in terms of the preparation. Then, once you've cooked this a little bit to, release the goit to, to reduce the goitrogens, and you've just dried it a little bit, then you can go ahead and saute it, or you can just eat it like that. Toss it with a little butter, a little olive oil, salt, Parmesan cheese, you know, whatever you're doing, and enjoy it just like that. On the other hand, if you wanna crisp it up a little and you wanna pan saute it, you can do that at this point. But that's what I recommend taking this step. If this is something that, that you're eating on a very regular basis and you wanna limit your exposure to goitrogens, especially uh, if you are, you know, have had issues with your thyroid or are concerned about your thyroid health, you may not want to be adding uh, all of those extra goitrogens into your diet. Now, the very basic way that I like to prepare this for about this much of cauliflower rice is to put about a tablespoon of butter into a frying pan and then about a tablespoon of olive oil. And it's not an exact science, so don't worry about it, but in, in that general area. And this, we're just going to do a very nice basic uh, recipe uh, that you can prepare, and then you can take this basic way to prepare the cauliflower rice and jazz it up any way you want. You can add different spices, uh, you can saute it like this, and then you can put it in the oven and roast it up a little bit. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but this will just get you started with the basic uh, way to do this. And I'll show you what we'll do. And of course, I do like to put a little grating of Parmesan cheese on <laughs> at the end. But let me get this up to medium and uh, I'll melt this butter and warm up this olive oil and we'll add this in and I'll show you how we cook it. Alrighty, I've got my butter and my olive oil nice and warmed up and I'm gonna go ahead and just add in our cauliflower rice. And basically all I'm gonna do, I'm just sauteing this, just mixing it nicely with the butter and olive oil and I'm just gonna saute this for a few minutes, that's it. Now I'm not gonna add the salt until the very end and the reason for that is if I add the salt now, the salt will cause uh, the cauliflower to release some liquid and I don't wanna saute it where it starts to get a little mushy. I wanna keep it nice and keep sort of the grains <laughs> separated. So we'll salt it at the very end. But we'll just do this for two, three minutes. At, uh, that's about it. And then we'll get ready to plate it up. Well, I just sauteed that for about two or three minutes and I gave it a little taste. It's the perfect texture. And now, the, off the heat, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt. And I'm not gonna add too much 
just a little bit because then, you know, individual tastes, you may want to, everyone may want to adjust it at the table. But then I'm just going to mix that salt through and then we'll get ready to plate it up and give it another taste. <laughs> now I want to mention that when you went through the process of grating this up before you cooked it, uh, at that point, if you wanted, say you were making number of batches, as I mentioned earlier, you can put them in plastic bags, put them in your refrigerator and keep them for a couple of days if you're going to use them regularly, uh, or you can put them in your freezer, you know, again, in those nice tightly sealed plastic bags, or even if you have like food saver uh, type bags, that'll be great too. And in the fridge, you know, as I said, they can last a couple of days. In the freezer, they can last a couple of months. So that's a, a nice thing to, to do if you do a big batch and then you put them in the freezer and you've got them for any, you know, any time you want to make them with a meal. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I'm going to be doing some follow-up videos. I'm going to show you how to dehydrate this and, I'm, and then I'll show you how to rehydrate it and then which makes it very nice because about a cup of the raw cauliflower rice once dehydrated is about a quarter of a cup. So if you want to dehydrate it and then store it in your pantry, you can do that as well. And it takes up less space and is ready to rehydrate and turn into a meal when you need it. And then also in dehydrating it, I'm gonna show you in another video that you can then go ahead and turn your cauliflower rice into cauliflower flour that you can bake with. And once we have the cauliflower flour, I'm going to show you how to bake with it, how to make some different things, uh, including the popular uh, pizza crusts, uh, and actually making it with the cauliflower flour as opposed to just some mashed cauliflower. It really has a, an amazing consistency that is difficult to tell uh, that it wasn't made with all-purpose flour. Well, let's give this a taste. Mmm! This is really good. For those of you who have had cauliflower rice, uh, you know that it doesn't taste 100% like white rice, but very similar. And it, you can tell you're, you're, or you feel like you're eating a grain as opposed to a vegetable. I think this is a wonderful addition uh, to your diet uh, if you have to avoid grain and you're, you're staying low carb, so on and so forth. I think this is wonderful. And grate a little Pecorino Romano on top of this or a little uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Really kick up the flavor. It's very good plain with just a little salt cooked in the butter and olive oil. Uh, but I do like to add uh, those, those hard cheeses that have a little strong taste or a little salty taste. Uh, they really uh, kick it up quite a bit. And then as I said earlier, you can add spices, you know, when you're sauteing it. There's so much that you can do with this. It really starts with a very basic flavor, no different than white rice. So I hope you'll give this a try. So if you'd like to learn more about traditional nutrient-dense cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I share with you how to make a keto bone broth. And it's good for low carb and paleo as well. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.